In this video, we'll be discussing how the Tulsa assesses language processing. In our last video, we reviewed the unique features of the Tulsa that set it apart from other aphasia tests. In this video, we're going to look at how the Tulsa examines various types of language processing, both input and output, and we'll look at examples of Tulsa subtests. As you recall, the interactive activation model holds that language processing, both receptive and expressive, proceeds through different levels. Language output starts with an idea, represented here by the picture of the cat. It then moves on to the activation of semantic features, such as furry or whiskers. From there, it proceeds to the lexical level for word retrieval and finally to the phonological level for phoneme selection. In aphasia, deficits are seen at the lexical or the phonological level. A key feature of the Tulsa is that it can determine at which level the patient has the most difficulty. A number of Tulsa subtests are designed to assess phonological level processing. In this test, the rhyming judgment test, the patient hears two words, such as mat, and cat, or knife and tree. Their task is to indicate if they rhyme by pointing to the yes or no button. This assesses input processing, or in other words, auditory comprehension. The non-word repetition test also assesses language at the phonological level. Here, both input and output processing are examined as the patient repeats non-words, such as exafand, or half-ill. Non-words are used because they zero in on phonological processing. No semantic information is needed to complete this task. The Tulsa also has a number of tests that examine the semantic level of language processing. In this task, the category judgment test, the patient hears two words, such as apple and orange, or hammer and violin. They then indicate if the two words belong to the same category by pointing to the yes or no. Picture naming is a common feature of aphasia tests, and in the Tulsa, it provides information on the semantic output skills of the patient. When results of phonological tests, such as rhyming judgment or non-word repetition, are compared with semantic tests, like category judgment or picture naming, the patient's relative strengths and weaknesses are revealed. This gives the clinician the ability to pinpoint therapy goals for each individual patient and make the most of their therapy time. As you can see from this table, the Tulsa includes other subtests that examine phonological and semantic levels of processing. Another important diagnostic feature of the Tulsa is that it can pinpoint where in the process of signal activation the patient is encountering difficulty. When the word cat is activated, that signal must be strong enough to inform the next step in the process, the activation of the phonemes k, a, and t. And while the signal for the word cat may be strong enough, it also must last long enough for the activation to spread to the phonological level. The Tulsa is designed to differentiate between problems in each of these aspects of signal activation, namely weak signal activation or too fast decay rate. How can the Tulsa determine if there is weak signal activation or too fast decay rate? The use of interval variations or delays reveal these differences. Patients who have a problem with weak activation do better with a five second delay between the stimulus and the response. It gives them extra time to strengthen the signal. Conversely, patients who have a problem with signal duration or who have a too fast decay rate do better with only a one second delay. They need to give their response before they lose the word. Here is the same rhyming judgment test we looked at before. This subtest is given under two conditions, one in which there is a one second delay between the presentation of the two words, and one in which there is a five second delay between the presentation of the two words. If the patient does better in the one second condition, we know that they are likely to have a problem with signal duration. If they do better with the five second delay, 
they are likely to have a problem with signal strength. Picture naming is another subtest that makes use of the 1 and 5 second delay conditions. In fact, all of the subtests that we've mentioned so far have 1 second and 5 second variations. In this video, we've explored how the TALSA can provide a detailed picture of aphasia by revealing if the patient is more impaired at the semantic level of language processing or at the phonological level of language processing. It also differentiates between different components of signal activation, signal strength or signal duration. In the next video, we'll take a look at how the TALSA examines verbal short-term memory and working memory in aphasia. See you then.